A beautiful woman and a car radio are not enough for this event. Performance and pressure are what counts here in Sinsheim, Germany. Only here at the Car and Sound Fair, the level of volume becomes an event itself. The audio fair has something for the tuning community to listen to. Systems that leave conversation disciples speechless. Well loud. I don't think you could stand it any louder. <laughs> this much performance takes time. It takes months to get a car ready for the car and sound. At the beginning, there are theories and an idea, which need to be realized by the time it gets to Sinsheim, because this car is the task of the boss, and Renato's conversion to the TTX is supposed to be perfect, nobler and sportier without exaggerating it. It really should be as if the car has come straight from the Audi factory and where the individual design department had a good day. That's how it should be. So soll sein. The concept, the TTX, should be a combination of the R8 and the iRobot Audi. This is how bodywork specialist Mike has imagined the car for the boss to be. Here at the front, we would need to extend the bumper by at least five centimeters so that we get a good level for the air intake. But it's still supposed to be suitable for everyday use. Not an easy customer then, because when Carlos wants a conversion, then it becomes extreme, and his new project is a challenge. Carlos wants to completely convert the EOS because this VW cannot possibly stay like this. It's supposed to become wider, stronger and lower. Mike and Renato are responsible for the transformation of the EOS. The second workshop for Sinsheim Germany with clear instructions. This car has to be the absolute ultimate, and in only 21 days. Everything needs to come out, seats, trims, etc. Carlos said it's obvious the car must be better than the TTX, but he can forget about that. The car is taken apart within a few hours, but the first problems are already coming to light. The EOS is secured with screws in the seats and door area where Mike didn't expect any. These hidden brackets, hooks and locks make life a lot more difficult even for a professional. The VW makes Mike break out in a sweat. For example, that is the same here. They've used new clips here and they hold on like hell. You need to get behind them first. All soft body parts need to come off for the new look. It's actually just routine if Mike hadn't taken over an hour to get the bumper off. The VW people have thought of something quite weird here, which is a cabinet lock for a bumper. This might be quite funny when you need to change the bumper out quickly, but you don't need to secure a bumper with 20 extra screws. Apart from that, the only thing that makes sense is that the thing is incredibly expensive. A new dimension is the goal. At Alpine in Munich, Germany, raw material is turned into a car which is supposed to do more than just burn its profile into the tarmac. Sound expert Thomas wants a Megane that leaves its trace on the eardrums of the audio community. We are building a new car that is supposed to be quite extreme from the outside. The form is almost too exaggerated so that everybody notices that this car doesn't actually exist like this. We are rebuilding the interior from scratch. This means six digital amplifiers in the boot space, of course, and also two 30-inch subwoofers. The heart of the entire system is this unit that can be run with the iPod. The compact car mutates into a monster. The times when mum used it to go shopping are gone. The Renault becomes a one-person audio vehicle with a seat in the middle. This is how Marco has pictured the Megane. However, there is no space for the car radio, except when the planned monitor steering wheel becomes a radio steering wheel. 
Well, let's simply install the head here instead of in the monitor. We don't really need a monitor in this position anyway. So the head unit sits here and it just turns with it. Exactly. The TTX is in Renato's workshop in Mark Gröningen, Germany, and nothing has been done about the conversion of the interior. Only 14 days left, and the plan of the boss is frighteningly simple. Everything needs to come out so that we can get a clear picture, and then we can work properly. It doesn't matter where we start, everything needs to come out. Butchering an Audi in about 56 minutes. About an hour and the TT worth 45,000 euros is an empty shell. Mike should really take care of the Eos, but he couldn't resist this view. Well, it's quite naked, but it will get filled up again and then it will look quite solid again. To avoid annoying noises and vibrations of the boxes, the TT is insulated with about 40 special AIV mats. With bad hi-fi installations, too little insulation can be heard quite clearly as a metal clanging inside. Renato lays the foundation for a good sound using hot air. If you cut corners here, you can get a bad surprise. For example, in the door metal area, there's natural resonance, which will occur quite quickly. Acoustically, this is, of course, a disaster for the loudspeaker. The rejuvenation of the EOS engine has taken three days. A load air cooler that is something else, fat pitot tubes and an XXL filter provide a performance improvement of almost 100% to 250 horsepower. Many people just want to have everything. They want a good hi-fi system, super design of the car and, of course, as much engine performance as possible. A standard car is just too square for them. Mike takes care of the body kit for the car, a little bit lower with 19-inch rims and new accessories. Before it goes to the painter, the GFK parts must be ground quite thoroughly. The time is getting tight and Mike is starting to calculate. 14 days left, two and a half weeks before the car is ready on the exterior. This is going to get tight for Sinsheim. Thomas also has two construction sites. He plans the audio conversion of the EOS. And after thinking about it, it seems quite clear. Carlos has a problem. The subwoofers are simply too big for this car. The problem is that if we want to install the subwoofer into the side panel here, either the housing comes to here, and that means the children mustn't grow anymore, or the roof needs to be closed all the time. Too many components for too little space. The loading volume is sacrificed. We can only go through the ski bag opening into the boot. This way we won't lose so much boot space. The only thing is he can't take any skis with him, but I don't think Carlos is much of a skier anyway. Carlos collected his EOS a week ago. Then the car was given directly to Renato. And now the car is in bits and pieces in the workshop. Oh, bloody hell. We didn't want to shock you, but now you can see it for yourself. We're sorry, but... Uh, my beautiful new car. <laughs> Fat and wide. The Megan is optically almost ready. From the outside, the project car from Munich looks about as planned, but the car is still empty inside, especially as a few parts have only just come back from painting. This is much too late for Marco because now it's a week to the fair. Well, they were supposed to be here last week, so that we really have a good chance to check all parts, to carry out sound tuning just like you're supposed to. Now we really have to improvise. <laughs> When checking the interior parts, Marco notices that some of the accessories are missing. Amongst those, the chrome-painted covers for the boot. Without those, even improvisation is not possible. Because, as already said, if the parts aren't here tomorrow morning, the project won't get finished. Fact is, when I say this is how we're doing it, then it needs to be done like this. I'm not interested whether you like it or not, is that clear? Unbelievable, isn't it? 
Ciao, ciao. The car is supposed to be the main attraction of the Alpine Fair. The opening day without the Megane, unthinkable and a big humiliation. Well, I am really, really mad. I mean, we've been talking to them for 14 days now because of three parts, and they knew quite well when the deadline was. Now we have to manufacture the parts. From now on, we need to work day and night even without these three parts. They are now produced by another painter and will come back by express delivery. If the Megane is supposed to be ready for Sinsheim, nothing must go wrong anymore. The last exterior part for the Audi is ready. Only then Renato's TT is ready for inspection. To surprise Renato, Mike brings the car outside to showcase the new look. The standard TT has been converted into a combination of the R8 and the iRobot Audi. So the body kit is as good as completed, everything has been assembled. Madness. Brutal madness. Absolutely beautiful. Mikey. World class, well done. Really very, very good. In comparison, the front lip now stops 8 centimeters from the ground. The rocker panels have been bent outward and stand out a little bit. At the tail, an implied DTM diffuser provides the sporty touch. However, there's no time to celebrate. Well, we shouldn't really waste this much time. Let's get going on the next part. Let's order the parts and carry on. That's how we're going to do it. There is hardly anything left of the standard car, even the seats have been changed. The base are Recaro seats into which Renato integrates monitors. The bracket is the stabilized with GFK by the audio specialist. Then an AIV cover mat made of special fiber is laminated to the seat. This prevents tears and air bubbles after painting. After everything has resonated and we have an even surface and not the problem of a plastic shell and a spatula. And because the materials expand differently, it could cause tears. But now, of course, this can't happen again. We're absolutely safe. According to the timetable, the system is supposed to be adjusted in Munich. However, reality is somewhat different. The entire interior is still missing despite putting in several night shifts. Is the highlight of the fair in jeopardy? Actually, all the big parts are missing. Somehow we need to find the right compromise between the actual demand on quality that you make with such a project and the time that is already running out. Assembly against the clock. At least some of the big parts can be installed. The new subwoofer housing alone weighs about 60 kilos and Marco is rapidly running out of time. The last days before the fair are hell for the Alpine team. We're no longer talking hours, but minutes. In Mark Gröningen, Renato is already installing the technology into the TTX. Its subwoofer supply, if everything goes smoothly, a full thousand watts. This power would be enough to supply sound to an entire house. It sounds a bit like, whose is the loudest? Although this is not primarily about volume, but extreme dynamics, that's why it is now important to have enough end-stage power. Now it's gone in. The interior trim of the doors is made entirely by hand. The new design and insulation of the door alone takes half a day. Renato and Mike cannot imagine working according to the time clock. Before car and sound, only the deadline counts, not the working hours. We have worked seven days a week for the past four weeks. The trade union wouldn't be very happy with us. Mike spent last night with the EOS, and after all the conversions, the Tinkerer has a massive problem. Lowering the car and installing 150 kilos of audio system has brought the car down too low somehow. 
Only one thing for it, bring the car up again, if that's possible. Because of the weight of the hi-fi system, the car has been pushed down so low onto the suspension that the tail is almost two centimeters lower than the front. But I can't get it up much higher at the tail because there's not enough thread, and I could break the thread. That's too dangerous for me. I won't do it. The car stays as it is. Hopefully it will be fine, and it's too late for extensive conversions. The sound EOS needs to be the first at the fair. The first excursion with the EOS conversion. For Mike, it is an opportunity to listen out for strange noises or dragging wheels. And Mike is as proud as a new father whilst on his posing tour. Just like becoming a dad. It's indescribable. You can't put it into words when you worked on a car for so long. Several weeks and blood, sweat and tears are invested in such a car. Then the reward of being the first to drive the car. Renato's TTX must be at the fair by six as well, because then the doors are closed and you need special permission to get to the stand. For Renato, the first excursion is also a test. Does the car keep the promise of its looks? It runs well. It runs very, very well. However, performance at the fair only counts within earshot, but even there, something is brewing. A DVD player with navigation system is the heart of the system. Monitors in the seats and there is even a monitor in the footwell. At the tail, three output stages provide the necessary sound. The system costs over 7,000 euros. The working hours for perfect acoustics are too many to count and probably priceless. Thomas could have left the Alpine stand a while ago and gone home if there wasn't a big problem. We actually need to leave in an hour. In one hour we need to have finished the stand. It's okay so far, everything is here apart from our highlight. The Renault isn't here yet. The Renault is still being built in Munich, 300 kilometers away. The car must be ready in 10 hours, otherwise three months work off for nothing. Opening a fair without its highlight, not a good thing. The mood is tense. It really, really is urgent now, and we have so little time, we have to concentrate on installing the components as quickly as possible, so that we can check a new system, and then tomorrow at 9 o'clock at the fair. In Munich, the Alpine car hi-fi team is working against the clock. Megan must be at the car and sound in since I'm in six hours. The tuners are fighting for their jobs. If the Renault isn't finished at the last minute, they not only lose their reputation... You know that it needs to be finished, and you actually do everything, and it will work. It is hard, but we will definitely finish it. The car and sound opens its doors on time. Today the EOS is presented. Carlos can see and hear his converted car for the first time. The man from Swabia has been waiting for this moment for days. I'm very excited. I mean, I know because I haven't been able to sleep for the past three nights. I'm totally nervous. I am looking forward to it more than a kid to Christmas. Presents. Carlos is given the key to his completely overhauled EOS. The front apron is definitely lower. The extended side makes the VW seem significantly bigger. The sound is provided by two side amplifiers and a central subwoofer. Carlos is happy with the EOS, even if it had to be taken apart for it. 
think about it, I got the car new from Wolfsburg, and a few weeks later it was completely taken apart. I think the people in Wolfsburg didn't imagine it to be like this. Not everybody does this. Thirty minutes late, but still, the Alpine project is at the stand. I'm so glad. That was, that was something that must never happen. The fair is starting and the car isn't there, but it's here now. Without Marco, because after 72 hours continuous assembly, he has gone straight to bed. The completion of a car for a fair has never been so tight. However, after this complete conversion, there is nothing left of the standard car. The car sits on gigantic OZ 22-inch rims. The five-seater has been turned into a multimedia one-seater. The construction site at the tail has been turned into a rolling sound system by the team. You can actually feel the sound with the two subwoofers and six digital amplifiers. Visitors not only become eyewitnesses, but also ear witnesses. That was well loud. I don't think you could stand it any louder. 